well, studies on conventional mineral inclusions have concluded that the majority of diamonds form at a depth of about 180 to 200 kilometers within the lithospheric mantle, that is the rigid mantle, part of the upper mantle. And uh, we did some studies in the mid 80s at, here at the University of Cape Town, which found uh, some mineral inclusions in diamonds that had slightly different compositions. And when we looked into it, we found that uh, these minerals were actually uh, representative of deeper forms of, or deeper origins. And the specific mineral was, was majorite in this case, uh, but subsequent to that, majorite is a high pressure form of garnet. And subsequent to that, a whole suite of, of mineral inclusions or unusual mineral inclusions have been found and have been interpreted to represent diamonds from very deep origins. Well, how we know this is that uh, prior to the recognition in the natural mineral sample, in the natural diamond samples, um, a lot of work had been done in various laboratories around the world, both um, predicting that these high pressure forms of minerals would be present, but then also uh, specifically growing uh, synthetic examples of these minerals. So it was predicted in the literature that these minerals would be there, and this was we finally found them uh, present in natural diamonds, which was a, a large step forward. Well, it's a surprisingly large number, actually. Um, over 30 different mineral phases have been recognized. And the most important of these are uh, majorite garnet, which is a high pressure form of garnet. Um, and then there's wadsleyite and um, ringwoodite, which represent the high pressure forms of olivine, which is actually the most abundant mineral in the upper mantle. And the interesting point about these minerals as well is that uh, they contain a lot of water, which is actually uh, quite important for mantle processes. Actually, it's interesting that uh, two major zones are recognized from two depths. So uh, the shallower depths are represented by the mineral majorite, typically, um, which is reflective of a meta eclogite host rocks, which is one of the major paragenesis of diamonds. And then the second zone is from deeper down in the lower part of the mantle, um, which is reflective of a meta peridotite. And those, the minerals representing those um, are the high pressure forms of olivine that I mentioned. Well, I guess the, the first thing is that um, if these mineral inclusions provide direct evidence that diamonds have formed up to 800 kilometers in depth, which is actually quite a remarkable thing. The second thing is, is that the fact that these diamonds have made it to the surface is a reflection of the dynamic processes that go on within the mantle. And the third point is um, that these minerals, quite surprisingly, contain quite a lot of water in their structure. And this has implications for uh, mantle processes. Uh, for example, volcanism. Um, the water facilitates partial melting in the mantle, which ultimately uh, leads to volcanism around the earth and ultimately kimblite volcanism specifically, which uh, samples the diamonds from the mantle and brings them to the surface.